Snowy Days Productions presents. Hello there. This is your host, Ricky Klein, the Cassette Master, coming at you for the first time in forever. It's been a heck of a long time, am I right? <coughs> well, back again to present to you some more things. In today's video, we'll be showing to you two examples of the Minifon MI-51 wire recorder. Not a tape recorder, wire recorder. Now, it's a very interesting piece of technology. These devices utilize thermionic valves or vacuum tubes. And um, anyway, <laughs> they're really fun, really cool, and really interesting devices. Um, one of them is a more original version, and which is made by Monsk. And the other one is the slightly later version, which is more prevalent, made by Protona. Both, though, are the Minifon MI-51 wire recorders that could be used by dictating people or they could be used by spies, they could be used by the CIA, they could be used by private eyes are watching you. Or should I say instead, Big Brother is watching you. The question is this, is it 2024? or 1984. <laughs> Tick tock goes the clock. Could you tell me the time? Well, this is a timeless timepiece. This will never tell you the time except for but two times a day. The hands will never move. The clock will never tell the time. Isn't that sad? And why is there a wire on this time? I mean, on this watch. Simple. Because you could be wearing a wire. Here is the glorious and beautiful Minifon M.I. 51, or as is embedded, molded into this top cover, S51-51. It is a very beautiful and fascinating recording machine. Now this one uh, isn't in mint condition. Um, it's missing a little uh, screw-on piece that goes here. And it has some cracks, mainly in the top plastic piece. And it's missing the screw, that the thumb screw that holds this on. But it's still an extremely cool machine. Um, this recorder is a rather rare piece and highly sought after by collectors and they tend to fetch high prices on eBay. But if you can find a good deal on one, I recommend it because these things are freaking cool. But beware, the plastic can get rather brittle as these recorders are 70 years old or more. Okay, so let's take a look at the little watch again. So it's a little Protona stopwatch, though it's not an actual stopwatch. It is a microphone. 
you look now, unfortunately, the wrist band section is long gone. But on the other side, you can see it's got an array of holes because this watch is actually a crystal microphone. The idea is the spy or the private eye or whatever could wear the watch on their wrist and then with a long sleeve shirt would cover up the cord and then the person could conduct an interview of a criminal or a conversation with some a person of interest or whatever and record the conversation as they would literally be wearing a wire. In one sense, they'd be wearing a wire because there'd be the wire going to the hidden microphone on their person. On the other hand, other hand they'd be wearing a wire because hidden on their person in their larger pocket would be the mini fawn wire recorder recording their voice onto wire hence they're wearing a wire also with this machine is a set of stethoscope style earphones the actual speaker is here and it clips on to the stethoscope and let's take another look at the actual machine this is the original version now I can't say whether this one is from 1951 or 1952 but it is, I believe, one of the earlier examples. Um, the Minifon was first introduced in 1951. Matter of fact, the man who designed it had started to design in 1948, and I think the design was completed in 1950, and then the units were produced in 51, or were started to be sold in 51. I probably started being produced in 51 or something like that. I think September 1951. Um, there's some websites I'll put in the description that have information about the history of the Minifon, um, where I found some of this information from. Um, this recorder used three uh, batteries, or technically four in this case, the motor batteries would go on this side. I know this is the most crummy and crude means of doing batteries. Probably a lot of you guys are screaming at me thinking you should have made reproduction mini fond battery cases. How dare you do such a, a terrible job, but whatever, it works. These are lithium ion rechargeable batteries. Um, I don't vape, but some of my friends like to vape and they buy those disposable vapes that, you know, once you use the vape, they typically would get thrown away. They can't be refilled. But the amazing thing about the disposable vapes is they contain rechargeable lithium ion batteries. So I ask my friends that when they're done with their vapes, they just give them to me. I take them apart, remove the rechargeable lithium batteries, and I have lithium batteries of various different sizes. So they really come in handy. So normally there was a battery here and a battery here that would face each other. They are wired in parallel to get more running time. And uh, I think they were nine volt batteries originally. Um, and the, 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 the mini phone can also run fine on 12 volts. The later Protona version used a one singular longer 12 volt battery. So I put the vape uh, batteries in here and I just put these covers on to try to make it look a little bit more, you know, original ish kind of at least to cover up the ugly batteries so it looks less you know it looks more aesthetically pleasing if I put these covers on um, so those are the motor batteries then across here is a 30 volt 30 30 volt anode battery that's the battery for the plates supply for the vacuum tube and then underneath, you can see a little bit of it right there peeking through with Panasonic. It's just a 1.5 volt AA battery. It's 
to power the filaments of the thermionic valves. Um, if any of you guys out there can uh, are good with the serial numbers and being able to, to deduce the year of manufacture, uh, this would be a handy, a handy thing. The serial number of this mini fawn is zero two one six six, or number two thousand one hundred and sixty six with a leading zero. This is making me think that it is a rather early one as there were less than 3,000 units produced at the time of this one's manufacture. Of course, I don't know how many they made in the year and that kind of stuff. But there's other evidence that makes me think this is a very early model. But before I go into more of that evidence, let's pull out the other mini farm. And also, I want to show you the, the case, too. Here's the mini farm case. It's got mini fawn and that cool looking font sorry i i couldn't help it um the zipper and it's not the it's not in the best shape notice it has no provisions for hooking up a uh, strap to carry it with um and unfortunately this one is is kind of falling apart i need to re-glue it because this part here is coming undone here so I don't like putting, I was, I did put the mini fawn in this case before and would take it out, but I, I don't want to put it back in and take it out too many more times because it's, it's falling apart. You know, it's, it's, it's over 70 years old. Um, but that's the mini fawn case. Now we compare the other mini fawn I have here. There's differences in their cases for one, which is an interesting thing to note. At first glance, they look identical to each other, but if you look at the case of this other mini fawn, you can see it actually has a, a strap on it. A leather strap to carry it with. Also, the part you pull out for rewind has an oval-shaped hole, and when you look at the other mini fawn, it's just a round hole. This is the earlier version the earlier version of the mini fawn was manufactured by Monsk and Company, or Monsky, or however you would pronounce it. It's, I think it's spelled M O N S K E. And then the later version is the Protona mini fawn. These are much more common than the Monsk original mini fawn. We open up the case. You can see it has an opaque cover as opposed to a clear cover. <clears throat> and the thumb screw is two positions for open and close. The thumb screw that is missing on my other unit is just a screw you unscrew. Now, let's take it out of the case. This is a very, very delicate and careful operation. Because Here are both mini fawns removed from their case. When we compare and contrast each mini fawn, we'll notice on the clear one, which is the Monsk version, it just says mini fawn. Got the wavy lines made in Germany. On the Protona version, not only is it opaque, but it says mini fawn and then protona, the wavy lines made in Germany. Of course, we know when we all know good and well, it was Western Germany at the time. Definitely not Eastern Germany. Also, on the Monsk version, in the middle, you can see a connection for external power supply. On the Protona version, the connection has been moved off to the side. Remove the covers. It says S5151. Then we take the cover off the Protona. Okay. Here are the two mini fawns. The Protona version is far shinier than the Monsk. 
The Protona version started production, I think, in 1953. So from 1951 to 53, it was the Monsk Mini Fun, or maybe, yeah. And then from 1953 to 1955, it was the Protona Mini Fun. And then after that, they introduced their next model, the P55, which I don't, I don't have a P55 in my collection. Um, but there are plenty of pictures of those things online and videos of them as well. Okay, so let's turn our mini fawns around real quick to look at the other side. Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? For many years, I heard that joke and thought it was very corny because, oh yeah, the chicken is crossing the road so he gets to the other side of the road, big whoop. It's kind of silly. Not, on, not until 20 years after I first heard the joke did it finally dawn on me what the joke was. It was to get to the other side, as in dying by getting hit by a car and crossing over to the other side. And, and I didn't get that joke until, not, until, 20, until over 20 years after I first heard it. Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. Took me that long to, 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 to finally figure it out. Okay, so you can see on the front or the control side, more precisely, of the mini fawn, you have a lever that you pull out to start the mini fawn or stop the mini fawn. You have one singular audio jack and a volume control. The same phenomenon is repeated on the Protona version. Now let's look at the serial numbers of each. Obviously this Monsk one is a serial number 02166. The Protona mini fawn, it's totally super serial number, totally super serial right now, man bear pig, is 22680. It's still five digits because the other one, although it's a four digit number, is a five digit serial because it has a leading zero. You can see by this time it's over 20,000 units, assuming they started at serial number one. This being a Protona would have been made in 1953 or later, but no later than 1955. This Monsk version would have been made no later than 1953 but judging by the earliness of the serial number, I'm thinking more likely 1952, maybe even 1951. But the differences don't stop there. Now, some other general differences to notice between the Monsk and the Protona versions is the metal surface the mechanism is built on. You can see on the Monsk version, it's a smooth surface, and on the Protona version, it's a rough, you know, dotted surface. The Protona version, also, the wire spool had these two little clips, the Protona name, and the Protona version has this black and white semicircle on the supply spindle. On the Monsk version, there is no black and white circle, and its, and its supplied wire school, spool is, uh, doesn't have any writing or anything on it, just solid. But the most interesting thing I've noticed between these two machines, and what also makes me think that this Monsk Mini Fawn is a very early one, is the drive motor uh, design. I know I haven't even shown these things record and play yet. You know, I'm just I'm just taking this long to describe stuff. But hey, it's a cassette master video. So there. You get that crap. Um, well, some people might like it, some people might hate it. Um, okay, so this is something that at first I didn't think much about until I noticed the difference. And it was very, very interesting to me. So the later 
Monsk minifongs, and I believe they were the later ones. The Monsk ones being the ones with the two batteries, that's the easiest way to tell them apart. Two batteries for the motor versus one long battery for the motor. If it's two batteries, it's Monsk. If it's one long battery, it's Protona. Um, do you notice anything striking between these two? If you, if, if, if you look straight at them, I don't know if you can. On this one, there's a small lever. On this one, there's not. Let's take a close-up. Turn these mini phones 90 degrees. You can see at the corner of this earlier Monsk mini phone, there's a small lever here, and there's a cutout slot, and you can see a sideways disc inside. But when we look at its neighbor, the later Protona version, that little lever is not there, and there's not a cutout for the disc. If you go on websites that show various different Minifon MI-51s that people have, you'll see a picture of the Monsk version, i.e. it has the two batteries and the smooth metal instead of the uh, dotted metal. And you'll notice that those those uh, some of the other ones in those pictures, although it's Monsk, do not have the lever. Or on one example I saw on, I think it was VintageTechnics.ru, which is one of the best websites I've ever seen for tape recorder collections. My gosh, it's amazing. Um, was a Monsk mini phone that had a hole for a lever, and it had the cutout, but no lever. And you might be wondering, what in the heck is going on here? Well, the fascinating the fascinating thing to note is the lever is a speed control. Continuously variable speed control. The earlier Monsk Minifon recorders, or at least the original version, had variable speed. The later versions were one singular speed. You could not vary the speed. Um, if you look at the picture of the patent, I will put the link in the description. The patent for the Minifon design, the original patent showed the speed control. The original version of the Minifon with the speed control, the way the motor speed was regulated was by a mechanical governor and not an electromechanical governor, just purely mechanical. It had three little weights on the shaft and a disc. And then when you adjust the speed control, it pushes a friction clutch from further on the disc or less on the disc, which would change its position slightly, and it would change how far those metal balls would spin out or not, and therefore change the speed. It was an interesting design. I've seen this type of design used on the clockwork-driven tape recorders. If you look at a clockwork mechanism, they will have three balls or little weights that spin around on the, on the, for the speed governor. And then you'll have a disc that you'll adjust how far out it goes, which adjusts how wide the balls spread, and that will adjust the speed. This is a very interesting thing to see it on an electric motor with that kind of means of adjusting the speed. The downside of this uh, method is that the speed stability was not very good. Because the high amounts of wow and flutter, because the speed stability of the, of the mechanical regulation wasn't very good, they later updated the design to using an electromechanically governed motor as more common found with multiple tape recorders. The electromechanical governor had one preset speed and better speed stability. So it was an improvement. It was an improvement because it had improved speed stability. Um, but the disadvantage was twofold. On the one, you no longer had the provision to adjust the speed. 
because on this one you can run it at a lower speed and have more recording time. On this one is one speed. Another disadvantage was electrical noise from the governor is put into the amplifier, which you can hear. This one does not have as much electrical noise from the motor as this one has, but yet this one has a more stable speed than this one. Um, I have very, very rarely do I find any pictures online of another Monsk Minifon with the speed controller. Most of them don't have the speed controller. That's leading me to think that not only is this a much earlier version, but also much more rare. It makes me all the more pleased to have managed to acquire it. Okay. Now that we've had a long winded discussion, let's actually show these operate for the sake of a man named Pete. We all love you, Pete. We're doing it for you. All right, for a moment, we're switching to the built-in microphones of the camera and automatic level control. One thing I want to illustrate is the sound of it operating. Let's listen to the sound of the operation of the Monsk. love that sound when you stop it. it sounds like taking a sword out of its sheath now we will listen to the sound of the operation of the protona mini you can hear its motor has a distinctively different sound. It's a little bit more, more noisy because it has a brushes for the electromechanical governor operating and everything. It has a This is new. Since I have the battery removed, I'll show what it looks like with the battery removed. You can see uh, I think this is probably the company that sold this one in Tona, in Frankfurt, Germany. And the homemade battery I made, <laughs> it's about 9 volts. It's pretty crude and crummy. Silly. But yeah. The Reminifon is rewinding. Recordings can be heard rewinding through from the earphone. This is a helpful guide I have come up with while making test recordings for recording level settings. You may have noticed earlier that the Minifon has only one connector, that is one jack, um, for the input and the output. And you may have also noticed that there's no switch to switch between record and play mode. Um, obviously on the machine you just have a start stop and then you have a rewind and volume control and your input jack. And you're wondering how in the, in the heck does this thing tell between record and play modes. Well, it has two different jacks. The short jack is, is for recording. The long jack is for play. When you plug the long jack in, it activates a switch, which switches the unit into playback mode. Also, bear in mind, these are not quarter-inch jacks. There's some weird in-between size. When we measure the jack, it's about 5 millimeters, 4.99 millimeters, and in inches, that's 0.196. Obviously they would have used metric. None of this imperial rubbish. Take a quarter inch jack and find out what its size is. It's in inches it's of course wait 0.25 and then if you put it to millimeters 
quarter inch jack is 6.3 so it's not compatible oh and some people might wonder if a PL68 military connector will end up being the right size and you know that's a good question that one could pose so let's see no PL68 is 5.25 millimeters wide so that won't work either what I did here was made a couple of uh, adapters using the original jacks to go to 1 8 inch connectors so I can use not only different microphones but actually use an external amplifier instead of being relegated to only being able to use the earphones <coughs> so I'm going to make record tests on both units using all four of these different microphones the first is a Sennheiser MD441N dynamic professional quality microphone the next will be this Turner microphone from the late 40s or early 50s it's a crystal microphone it, it, it went with my standard or goes with my standard business machines wire recorder then I have an Electro Voice crystal microphone. I think this has lost some of its crystal power with age, so its output is a bit weak. Um, and sometimes it tends to pick up 60 hertz hum with its weak output because you have to turn the level up a bit more. But it is um, a good sounding crystal microphone. Uh, sounds more balanced than most, uh, better on the bass than most crystal microphones. And then finally we have the little stopwatch crystal microphone which I think has also lost some of its crystal power because if you compare the Electro Voice and the stopwatch their levels are similar to each other but the Turner's output is extremely strong and um, when you turn the level up all the way with the Turner mic it, it gets extremely sensitive and of course very easy to distort and overdrive so we'll plug in the recording jack, the short jack into the recorder before we make the recordings. The unit is rewinding. You can see the record playhead goes up and down to evenly distribute the wire along the spools. It really is a beautiful machine. An absolute work of art and engineering and his eye candy to look at. You're right. It's for you Douglas Allen. Now I could just play the mini fawn from the stethoscope directly through like this. But that does not do the mini fawn justice. I made an amplifier out of an old school speaker which had a volume control originally but I put an amplifier inside and used point-to-point -point wiring thank you very much <laughs> and this the design for it came from red free circuit diagrams online put a link in the description it works very well very well Dynamic microphone. If the level is set all the way up, and I'm speaking at arm's length distance, this is how it sounds. This is a recording on the Monsk Minifon MI-51 wire recorder. The microphone being used is a Sennheiser model MD-441N dynamic microphone. If the load is set all the way up, and I'm speaking at arm's length distance, this is how it sounds. But better yet would be to use direct hookup. So that's what we'll use to listen to these recordings.
All right, we're going to do direct playback, um, electrical directly. Um, playback from the uh, recordings on the Monsk Minifon MI-51. This is a recording on the Monsk Minifon MI-51 wire recorder. The microphone being used is a Sennheiser model MD. 441N dynamic microphone. If the level is set all the way up and I'm speaking at arm's length distance, this is how it sounds. This is a very beautiful wire recorder. In this recorder, excuse me, recording, I'm using the Turner crystal microphone. That is, yes, a crystal microphone. You heard me right. This uses crystal power. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, this is a recording on the mini file. With the level set all the way up, and speaking at arm's length distance, it sounds like this, rather overdriven and extreme. With the dots all aligned on the recording level, and it's all the way up, I bet it sounds a bit more reasonable. This one could easily pick up conversations. In this recorder, recording, we're using the Electro Voice Crystal Microphone. I imagine this microphone's probably from the 1950s. Testing one, two, three. Or maybe at the latest, the very, very, very early 60s, or probably the 50s, let's be real. Recording on the Minifon MI-51, serial number 02166. Manufactured by Monsk and Company. Or is it Monsky? Whatever. In this recording, we're using a little stopwatch. A stopwatch that can be used by spies. This little stopwatch has a crystal microphone inside, and you can hear the resonant sounds of the stopwatch. It has a very distinctive sound as the cavity of the housing of the watch resonates, and it gives a very distinct and metallic sound. When the level is set up all the way, and the stopwatch is sitting on my wrist, this might be an idea of how it would sound, picking up conversational speech. Probably, though, back in its day, it performed a little bit better because I think this watch has gotten a little bit weak in its output over time. So the resonances would have definitely still been there. And it resonates really strongly. Now we'll do playback from the Protona Minifon MI-51. Now I'm recording on the Protona Minifon MI-51, serial number 22660. Um, this is using a Sennheiser microphone. Um, you might notice in the playback from the Protona version, a bit more electrical noise from the motor, thanks to the use of the electromechanical governor. This is a test. This is only a test. Now, with the Protona MI-51, excuse me, Protona Minifon MI-51, we are using the Turner Crystal Microphone. Hello. Testing. One, two, three. When the level is set up all the way with this microphone, it also gets very sensitive to sound. Now, the two dots are aligned on the recording level. Testing. Hello. One, two, three. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Huh? You think I said goodbye? Think again. I'm using the Electro Voice crystal microphone. Attention, this is the CIA. We are from the government. We are here to help. Come with us. Come with us. And now we're speaking with the little stopwatch. Yes, I'll tell you your time. Just but twice a day. And the rest of the time it lies. Yes, I am speaking with a stopwatch. The level is set up all the way. Hello. Okay. I apologize that the uh, the beginning recordings had a bit of, uh, I guess, bad connection while making them. But the electrical noise you probably noticed was that continual static, which is... Uh, Anybody that messes with old 
you know, like portable reel-to-reels and, and whatnot, will rec instantly recognize that distinct electromechanical governor noise. Um, it's an unmistakable uh, sound, um, very uh, distinct. So that was uh, the sound quality of these uh, two mini phone recorders. Uh, there's still a couple things I want to show. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to demonstrate the variable speed um, and the different sound quality of the, uh, with the different speeds of the Monsk version. So we'll be showing that. And so now I'm rewinding. I'm going to play back a recording and demonstrating the speed. Okay. Speed demonstration. This recording I want to demonstrate the speed control. fast as it should. It's set to the maximum speed, but it ain't running at the maximum speed. It's having all sorts of problems. This makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, let's see how this comes out. This thing is all over the place. Can't trust it. I think it's speeding up now. Hi. Can I try to run faster again? Okay, it's speeding up now. Running a bit faster. The sound quality should be a lot better. Running the mini phone a bit fast. Yeah, so, yeah, it should be about maximum now. Okay, we're going to go back down again. We're running a little slower. Hello, testing one, two, three, hello, okay. Hello, testing one, two, three, hello, okay. 1984 by Spirit, as played to you from the Minifone MI-51. As you can tell, speed stability is not the Mini Fawn's strong suit. Now, we'll do a comparison with music recording on the Protona version with the electromechanical governor speed regulation. Now presenting Promises, Promises by Dion Warwick, as brought to you by the Protona Mini Fawn MI-51. Uh 
Promises, promises, I'm a fool with promises, promises now. I don't know how I got the nerve to walk out. If I shout, remember, I feel free. Now I can look at myself and be proud of laughing out loud. Oh, promises, promises, this is where those promises, promises end. I don't pretend that what was wrong can be right every night. No. As you can hear, the speed stability of the Protona version is far more stable thanks to the use of the electromechanical governor. The downside, of course, is the increased amount of electrical noise in the audio. What's cool looking is to watch that little pattern go by when the doors close. That's how you have a visual indicator that the wire is not only running, but not broken. I hope you enjoyed the video of the Monsk and Company and Protona Minifon MI-51 portable wire recorders. These are beautiful machines, highly collectible, and some of the coolest recorders in existence, in my opinion. Just a tidbit of knowledge to pass down. In here, in the case, is this strap. Normally this strap would go like that and it will assist in pulling the minifon out. But I have bad news about this strap. The chemicals of this strap are such that when they make prolonged contact with the plastic on the back of the minifon MI-51, it reacts with the plastic and made this permanent mark. I'm going to put a piece of paper in between this and the strap so it doesn't react even further. I hope you enjoyed the video showcasing the Minifon MI-51 portable pocket-sized wire recorder. An absolutely beautiful feat of art and engineering. Another tidbit of information that is also useful to know is that the invention of the Black Box Flight Recorder was inspired by a Minifon MI-51 in Australia. <laughs> this has been a Cassette Master production. <laughs>